with just one word, you calm the storm that surrounds me. With just one word, the darkness has to retreat. And just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. And just one touch, my eyes were open to see. My heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that he can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes no way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Here we go. Just one word. You've broken inside me. Just one word. chapter 5 therefore since we have been justified through faith we have peace with the God through our Lord Jesus Christ from whom we have gained access by faith into this grace of which we now stand and we rejoice in this hope of the glory of God not only so but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces Perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit that he's given us. As we enter this week, we will think back on this year when the times that we were suffering and the perseverance that got us up to this point 
and this week. And we should be, honestly, a grateful time every week to say, God, thank you so much. But this week is carved out for that. And we want to do an older song right now. And it isn't because we want to do an older song because it's old. We want to do an older song because they're great. And when we do a great older song, it just takes us back to that moment in time. So as Amy is going to lead us now in this old hymn.
Amen. Go ahead and be seated, and and uh, I would like to invite um, Jamel and Christina and Victoria Bose to come and join me up front. Good morning. Good morning. You want to kind of slide over here? Slide over here. There you go. Dear friends, baptism is an outward and a visible sign of the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through his grace, we become partakers of his righteousness and heirs of life eternal. Those receiving the sacrament of baptism are thereby marked as Christian disciples and initiated into the fellowship of Christ's holy church. The Lord has expressly given to little children a place among the people of God, and this holy privilege must not be denied them. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus when he said, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. We have a wonderful opportunity this morning to share in baptism, and uh, uh, I am so thankful to be the pastor that gets to baptize um, this special young lady, but not only uh, this special young lady, Victoria, but also um, this morning, Jamel and Christina reaffirm their baptism by receiving uh, water as a symbol of their baptism. Jamel and Christina, I ask you a couple of questions. Do you, in presenting this child for baptism, confess your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Do you? Thank you. And do you, therefore, accept as your duty and privilege to live before this child a life that becomes the gospel, to exercise all godly care, that she be brought up in the Christian faith, that she be taught the scriptures, and that she live to learn to give reverent attendance upon the public and private worship of God. Do you? Thank you. And will you endeavor to keep this child under the ministry and guidance of the church until she, by the power of God, shall accept for herself the gift of salvation and be confirmed as a full and responsible member of Christ's holy church? Will you raise her within the church? Will you? Thank you. All right. Okay, Victoria, if you'll step up here and bow. Okay, there you go. And Victoria, do you desire to be baptized in this faith? All right. Victoria, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All right. And Christina and Jamel, would you, would you also kneel? And do you desire to be baptized, reaffirming your baptism when you were a child, do you? Okay. Christina, boast, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jamel, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, would you all rise? And would you turn and face the church? Would you join? Amen. If you will, join with me and let's pray for this wonderful family. Lord God, we just uh, admire 
how you are at work in the lives of families. And today we recognize your grace in working in the Boast family. Lord, thank you for Victoria. May she grow strong and may she deepen in her understanding of your love and your grace. And bless Christina and Jamel as they live a life before her that becomes the gospel. Bless this family and keep them. And Lord, may we as the church never do anything that would hinder not only Victoria, but Jamel and Christina, knowing your love and your grace that we experience through the church of Jesus Christ. Bless us as a church family for this family. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. All right, man. All right, at this time, I'd like to invite all the children in the sanctuary to come on up for children's moment. We're going to come with me to children's church this morning. Y'all go ahead and come on up. Have a seat up here with me at the, at the stairs. <clears throat> hey, guys, how are y'all doing? Good. Give some time to get everyone to come on up. You know, normally I like to bring something up here to show you guys, but today we did something special, didn't we? What, did, what happened with you? That's right, you got baptized. And you see our baptismal font right there? That's probably the best illustration that I could have gotten today, right? I think this is such, something to be super thankful for because guess what this week is? What comes up this week? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, that's right. And you know what? I am so, so thankful that we had a baptism today because what does that mean? That means that we've asked somebody to join the church and someone has invited Jesus into their heart and they're going to follow them. That could be the most awesome thing that we could be thankful for, isn't it? Yeah. So let's be thankful for that this morning, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the things we're thankful for in children's church today. Does that sound good? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the baptism that we saw this morning. We thank you for all the things that you've given us, not just material things, but our families, and especially your love for us. And we especially thank you for your church and our church family. Help us to remember that this week and help us to love one another as you have loved us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Matt. God bless these children, these young people, these students as they go out. You know, um, I, I uh, used to have a friend, or I still have a friend in ministry, but a fellow that I used to work with at a previous church who would talk about baptism in, a, in an interesting way. He would say baptism is like wearing a team jersey. You, you are displaying by your baptism that you're on the same team with us in Christ. And I like that description. Um, we're baptized into Christ. We're baptized into the family of God. And uh, that's what we experience in, in baptism. Uh, this morning we need to, to pray together. And, and I know that, that there are perhaps prayer concerns that you have there are people that we know that, that need God's touch, and we need to pray for them. Let me mention, um, and thank you um, so much. So many of you have reached out to Karen and I. Um, this past week, uh, late in the week, uh, Karen's stepfather died, uh, Charles Kyle. And um, we have his, his uh, funeral services tomorrow in Baton Rouge at 11 a.m. And thank you for praying. Thank you for your many expressions of support and encouragement. Uh, I will be doing the funeral and I would appreciate your prayers um, as I conduct the service. But, uh, but thank you for praying for Karen and our family and Karen's mom. And uh, please continue to pray. 
There may be other prayer concerns and people and situations that we have on our minds. Let's bring those all to the Lord. Would you join with me and let us pray? Oh Lord, we thank you for this season of the year that in a sense begins this week with thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you for all of your blessings. And all of us, if we give time to reflect upon it, everything that we have and everything that we are comes directly from you. Lord, we we want to say with all the people, the, the cadre of the faithful, we want to say thank you for all of your good gifts. And today, in addition to saying thanks, we, we bring to you our needs. We confess that, that each one of us, we have issues or concerns. We have friends or loved ones that we want to pray for and ask for your mercy and your grace and your healing power for them. But also for ourselves, we, we pray. Sometimes people think that it's not appropriate to pray what they call selfish prayers. But we do pray for ourselves. It is appropriate to bring every need to you. We can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. And so we do cast upon you, Lord, the needs that we have and the needs of others that are in our hearts and minds. And Lord, during this week, as this Thanksgiving approaches, many of us are traveling or we have family members traveling to be with us. And so we ask God for your traveling mercies for all of us and for those who are traveling during this week as we come together for a Thursday or Friday Thanksgiving celebration. Thank you, Lord, for all your good gifts. Now, as we continue during this time to worship, Lord, I pray that your spirit would dwell that we would be open to you as we hear your word. May we be open to how you want to speak into our current circumstance. Thank you, Jesus. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. On this Sunday of Thanksgiving, I'd like to read to you from the Old Testament, the book of Joshua. Now, Joshua was the the patriarch who took on the mantle of leadership of the children of Israel when Moses died. And Joshua led the children of Israel from the wilderness across the Jordan River and into the promised land. And we get near to the end of Joshua's life. 
And we're reading in chapter 24. And I'd like to read to you verses 13 through 18 of Joshua 24. And this is Joshua speaking for the Lord. He's speaking God's word to the children of Israel. And he says, I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which you did not build and you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the people including the Amorites who dwelt in the land. We also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. This is the word of God on this Sunday of Thanksgiving for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're reading from the experience, the story of the children of Israel. Joshua reminded the gathered people, the, Is, the Israelites had gathered together at Shechem to renew their covenant, their willingness to follow God. He reminded the gathered people of all that God had done for them and asked them as a result to recommit their lives to God. He said, choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This was part of the national story of the children of Israel. This was their story of salvation. This was their story of God's direct action in their lives. The history of their experience as a people it was focused on the fact that God had done everything for them to establish them as a people in their own land, the promised land. And all the leaders and the elders responded to Joshua and said, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. We also will serve the Lord. Now, what's crucial here is the recognition by the people that God was the source and the wellspring of their lives. They committed as a people to follow God. And they were thankful to God because of all that God had done for them. Psalm 136 in the Old Testament was written expressly to give thanks for God's deliverance and providence for Israel. And I'm not going to read the entire Psalm 31, but I want you to hear the emphasis on thanksgiving that's found in the first three verses. The psalmist writes and says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever oh give thanks to the lord of lords for his mercy endures forever so israel's national story was one centered on thanks for the actions of almighty god what is 
What is our national story? What would we say as a people about how God has worked in the life of our country and the lives of our families? I think it may be difficult to determine these days how our country's origins and national story involve God. But there was a time in our nation's history when faith in God played a more prominent role. There was a spirit that transcended politics, which was open to expressing faith and giving thanks to God. One example is the holiday of Thanksgiving itself. There were various times during our nation's founding in the early years when presidents and the Congress would call for days of fasting, prayer, and thanksgiving to God. Then, in October 1863, President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed and set in place what has ever since been a national holiday for thanksgiving to God. During the middle of the Civil War, listen to what President Abraham Lincoln wrote. This is his proclamation for thanksgiving, or this is a portion of it. He says, I do therefore invite my fellow citizens and every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. And I recommend to them that while offering up the ascriptions justly due to him for such singular deliverances and blessings, that they do also with humble penitence for our national perverseness and disobedience, commit, commend to his tender care all those who have become widows and orphans, mourners or sufferers, in the lamentable civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged and fervently implore the interposition of the almighty hand to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it as soon as may be consistent with the divine purposes to the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. That's our national story, ascribing thanks to God. But I want us to consider this morning, not just the national story, but how we give thanks to God on a personal level. Just as Joshua set out to name the blessings of God when he spoke to the Israelites, have you ever taken time to reflect on all the ways that God has blessed, guided, and protected you? Think about it. I have in my own life, I acknowledge and thank God for the family that I grew up in. My parents, now deceased, and my siblings are and were special blessings from God. Now, my family wasn't perfect, but it was a home in which there was a great deal of love. And there was an atmosphere that sought the best for all of us. And as I think about it, I can honestly report to you that every good thing that has happened in my life I didn't plan for, I didn't position myself so that it would come to me or bring it to pass. Every good thing that I have in my life, it all comes from God. Most notably, I'm thankful for my wife, Karen. She's a blessing from God. And I'm so thankful for our three kids. I thank God daily for Will and, 
and Laura and Allison. They are such good, loving, caring people. God has given me such a wonderful family. And I think about the churches that I have served as a pastor, and most notably this church. What a blessing from God you are. Have you done that? Have you reflected on all the ways that God has blessed in your life? What is the content of your thanksgiving? I'm sure that if you were to reflect and consider your life, you would find that the New Testament writer James, what he said was true. He wrote in James 1.17, Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. He's given us all things. You see, everything is a gift from God. Paul wrote to Corinthians who were boastful about their lives. And he said, who makes you differ from another? And what do you have that you did not receive? You see, everything is something that we received from God. God is the author and finisher of our faith, but also God is the provider of everything that we are and everything that we have. We need to say thank you to God, but not only for the blessings that are ours. We need to thank God also for our salvation in Jesus Christ. I think about it this way. When we turn to God, when I turn to God, he was already there to meet me and to save me from sin and from death through the sacrifice of his son. Due to this graceful gift of salvation, we all will always know the blessing of God in our lives, even into eternity, because the blessings from God don't end. Let's pray to God today a prayer of thanksgiving. Would you join with me and pray? Lord God, every good and perfect gift comes from you Lord we recognize and we acknowledge that while we might work hard or we might apply ourselves in various ways to the tasks of life the very gifts and abilities the energy the opportunities all come from you so that everything that we have and everything that we are all of our relationships every good and perfect thing has come from you and we simply want to say thank you we ascribe to you glory and honor and power and majesty because you are our God and you can do all things and have done all things. We bless your name. And on this Sunday of Thanksgiving, we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.